Hello, 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 and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the I Paint Ideas podcast, the show that takes you behind the art and deep inside the creative process. I'm your host, Dao. I'm a visual artist and the founder of the Dao Art Gallery. And on this podcast, I want to give my art a voice. So today I want to share with you a very special painting called The Acceleration of Change, also affectionately nicknamed La Paloma, and I'll tell you why later. And this painting comes from my emerging tech collection. I dedicated this collection to um, exploring the impact of emerging technologies on society. I love technology. I love everything about it. I love gadgets. And I went to school for math and computer science and cinematography, which explains a lot about my nerdy side. As you know, I did not study art. I didn't go to art school. I just did it as a child. I started very early on. And it was my thing, and I never thought about having a gallery, but here we are. I'm painting about technology, which kind of brings it full circle for me, and that's really what I love about art. It gives me a license and permission to paint whatever I like and gives me that umbrella protection. So thank you, Art, for that. I love you so much. About this Emerging Tech Collection, I had so many different topics and ideas to choose from to paint about, from diving into what it feels like to be confronted by an accelerated change, which is a subject of La Paloma, the painting that I'll talk about today, to artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, automation, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, fintech, blockchain, NFTs, crypto, nanotech, biotech, fashion tech, all kinds of tech, I guess, quantum computing, big data, and the list goes on and on and on. And then in a broader sense, topic of digital transformation, rapid ideation, digital first. My gallery is digital first, even though I make physical art, oil and canvas, 99% of the time. But I always look for different ways to bring my art closer to you using new media, digital platforms, VR, crypto, whatever, just to just to give you a better picture and a better story about the art. And I have so many different projects going on in the gallery at the moment. It just kills me that I can't tell you about it, but I will tell you as soon as I can. So stay tuned about that. Now in this collection, in the Emerging Tech collection, I I wanted to paint specifically about Emerging Tech because A, I like it, B, because I'm a total nerd, but we established that already, C, I don't think people realize the impact of these technologies on their lives. And I say emerging, but I would argue they're already here. And a lot of them exponential, meaning they start very slow and then they turn that exponential curve and they shoot up and metaphorically hit everyone over the head. Just look at media or retail. So having a collection like this, I thought would provide a jump off point to start discussions around it and bring awareness outside of tech space. And I had a lot to explore for sure. I had done um, 53 qubits about quantum computing, which was really fun. My painting in between the masks is about our need to create personas online and on social media. I did nano about nanotechnology, which is the smallest painting, as you can imagine, in the collection. And you can see them all in the online viewing rooms uh, on our website. I'll put a link in show notes so you can you can take a look. And as always, the show notes are available at ipaintideaspod.com. Now here for this collection, Emerging Tech Collection, I felt it was really important to start the collection by talking about and addressing how we deal with accelerated change. Because in tech space, right, that's just, you know, change is coming so fast. It's coming faster and faster and faster, and it feels like we just can't keep up with it. So I thought it was appropriate and needed to start there first. Okay, so let's talk about acceleration of change. I'm curious how you feel about change. Are you someone who welcomes change? Love change? Do you love change? Do you seek it? Do you initiate it? Do you demand it? Or do you avoid it? Do you resist it for as long as possible? Would you prefer that things just stay the same and you don't have to kind of worry about it? I love change. I value it. I look for it. I get bored if I if, if things are not changing. I get annoyed if things are not changing fast enough. So I've been mostly on the leading edge of change. And what I mean by that is I'm the change initiator So that, I think, afforded me 
the luxury of having more time to adapt to new situations than someone who has been forced to change, which is never, ever good. You never want to wait so long that you're forced to change because I think time is the differentiator. I don't believe that some people are better dealing with change than others because we're all wired for homeostasis, right? Change makers, however, have more time to adapt to what's coming and to do it on their terms than those who resist until the last minute or until it's too late and then it's a shock to their system. So I think time is really the key and you have to allow yourself as much time as possible to adapt and that's that's why you should be a change maker, definitely. Because the truth is, change is the only constant in our lives. It may be easier to some on from the outside, right? Harder on the on the others, but it eventually catches up with all of us just the same. So give yourself time. My initial idea for this piece, accelerated change or acceleration of change, was an abstract composition where I used colors and patterns and textures and so on, just to give an impression to the viewer, observer, that the change is coming. And it's coming faster and faster. And I did it. I painted it. I made that painting. And I think it was successful in the sense that it showed acceleration and it showed change. But when I looked at it, I was sitting like four feet from it and looking at it with a critical eye and reflected on it. I thought myself, meh, it's just, you know, for the lack of a better term, ordinary. I thought anyone could make this, and sometimes I am my own worst critic, for sure. But I think that was because it lacked the emotion of what it's like to be in the middle of the change. It was just too logical, too geometric, too calculated, too predictable. It was just too predictable, and I didn't like it. I was so frustrated, and I can't even tell you how frustrating it is for me to take my concept that I thought was good. I thought it was a good concept, acceleration of change. It was, it, it's interesting. Executed rather well, if I can say so myself, because I did, I did exactly what I wanted to do, and then realized that it completely missed the mark. So that was a good concept. I thought I, I did exactly what I wanted to do, and then it was like, you know, now what? <laughs> it was not... It was not what I wanted to say, if that makes any sense. It just felt detached, like an isolated change molecule in a vacuum or something. Just not related to anything. It just felt disconnected from the feeling that I wanted to convey, which is that of angst, maybe anxiety, the fear of what's coming, and whether or not we're able to handle it. So in my frustration, I was frustrated, I have to admit, I scraped all of the paint off the canvas. I felt it was mediocre. I felt I couldn't put out mediocre stuff. And so I scraped it. I felt like I had to add emotion and movement and maybe even offer a solution to deal with change or at least point of view on that situation as an artist. And then I felt guilty because I just wasted a bunch of paint. I think I should have just let it be and made another one, I should have just let it go because it was a reasonable interpretation of change by itself. So what does it feel like to be confronted with an accelerated change and how do you express that visually? I had the plan, I executed the plan, the plan didn't work, now I didn't know what to do. So I thought about the saying, if the tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, did it make a sound? If a change happens without anyone noticing, did it make an impact? I think is the case of these emerging technologies. They do have an impact, but people are just choosing sort of to ignore them. They just think it's going to be far in the future, and so I don't have to think about it just yet. So after I scraped my painting, which I came to regret now, I wish I didn't do it, but I did, uh, and I didn't know how to proceed. I was so mad at myself. I was creatively frustrated to no end, can't even tell you. And also, strangely, I felt a bit better because at least I was at square one and not staring at mediocrity, which I thought was mediocre and I wasn't going to put it out. So for this one, for this new one, or actually the original one, 
I had to dig a little deeper, get a lot quieter, and just listen to the images that are coming in my mind. And I told my family I was going outside. I was going to sit by the pool for an hour. I asked for an hour not to be disturbed. I didn't want people to let the dog out because I didn't want the dog licking my face because she does all the time. My Miss, Miss Bailey is awesome. I love you, Miss Bailey. But I didn't want her out. I didn't want her to lick my face. I didn't want anybody to ask any questions. I just wanted to be by myself, by the pool, and figure this out. Just get quiet, figure this out. How to make a painting about what it feels like when you're confronted by accelerated change. When you have that freight train coming at you, how does that feel? And how do you do it visually? How do you communicate that visually? So I meditated on it for about definitely a good hour. And nobody disturbed me. So that was awesome. And I remember being very still. I was very still, didn't move, very quiet, very quiet. And the image that for sure captured my imagination was a tango. Dance between the optimism for the future and the fear of the unknown. It's a dance between, you know, that fear of not knowing if you can handle something and also being optimistic that whatever it is, whatever is coming at you will be great. And I thought tango is an excellent metaphor for that because it is dynamic, it's fast, it's challenging and beautiful. And I imagine it's really thrilling to do, whether it's an actual dance, if you're dancing or if you're successfully dealing with change. And I thought to myself, that's really cool. I can work with that. I can, I, I can have an image of that. So I chose to paint a woman in a uh, fiery orange red dress dancing with the darkness, the optimism and the unknown. Orange and a little bit of yellow, the colors of optimism, red for excitement. And you cannot see who she's dancing with because it's the unknown. So you can't see it. And to get ready, I did a lot of research, which I always do for my paintings. I watched tango competitions. Um, and those people are so amazing. You have to watch them. I listened to Argentinian tango for days on end just to feel the rhythm. I want the painting to have certain rhythm to it. So I had to get that in my head. And I even asked my mom to play a tango on her accordion. She started learning when she was 60 years old, which, you know, I'm proud of you, mom. Um, but I asked her to play a tango. And the only thing she knew uh, is La Paloma. And that was even something she was just learning. So when I start painting, I would call her on the phone and say, can you play this? Because I want to I wanna hear the music, you know, her playing it. And so La Paloma stuck, and that's the nickname for this painting. It, the proper title is Acceleration of Change, but her nickname is La Paloma, and I use that interchangeably, so that's why. And my mom was such a great sport. You know, she would always do it for as long as I wanted, and it worked great for her, too, because she was practicing. So, so it was a win-win, but she was a total sweetheart, so thank you, Mom. And then after I made the painting... I had a chance to talk about it and show it to an actual tango dancer. And she told me that I painted a follower. And she told me that the woman would take the energy from her partner, in this case the unknown, and interpret it into a movement. And in my painting, the movement is called bolo. And I don't know if I'm saying it right, B-O-L-E-O. -E and that's the kick of the left leg that you see in the painting. And that is a very challenging and very twisted posture. It's super quick. You know, she's in high heels. Uh, so that was really impressive. So that's, that's why I chose that particular movement. But I also thought it was really cool because when you have a change coming, you have to take that energy from the change and make something beautiful out of it. So I thought that was, that was really cool. And the optimism in my painting is doing that dance, that really um, interesting, beautiful, dynamic, fast movement with great poise and balancing effortlessly on her right leg. And I try to make a point that she's doing that even in uncertain times by not showing her right foot firmly on the ground. In fact, it's an off canvas part of her. So it's not even on canvas, right? You can see it's cut off. 
But that's because I wanted to show that optimism exists even in uncertain times when we have no footing on solid ground. I like that. Her face and hair are almost an inverse image of what would they typically look like if I painted a realistic portrait. What I wanted to use that for is an indication that she has opened herself up to the change and started to lean in and embrace the unknown. It shows her commitment, her decision to go forward. And you can also see the grip of the unknown taking a hold on her by hugging her left hip. So you can see this um, kind of darkness coming over her left hip. So she is in an embrace of the change. And I think the word of the day is embrace because you either embrace the change or you brace for impact. The choice is yours. Now, her upper body is in a state of active transformation. And you see her back and her, and her right arm oscillating, kind of going too fast to see exactly what it is. Uh, I was thinking of like a time-lapse capture where it just goes, it's a blur, and it's showing transformation in progress. But interestingly, her dress and her left leg are firmly in the current situation, what is. And you can see movement and details, and um, they haven't really changed. You know, the transformation is coming, but it's not there yet. So her entire body is meant to symbolize different approaches to change. You have the early adopters that just dive right in, the head, you have early, late majority, right? The, the torso that <laughs> they're just changing, right? And then you have the laggers, the legs that don't want to change at all. So I, I really like this because in the face of accelerating change, you just have to metaphorically keep dancing. And if you stop, you become obsolete. So you have to keep moving, you have to keep dancing. So I like that a lot. And I think for some people, when they look at La Paloma and they see a dancer and, and they see the bolo kick, they don't immediately connect that with a title, which is acceleration of change. And I like that too, because change sometimes can be misinterpreted, misunderstood. So that adds a little bit of a layer to explaining that acceleration of change as well. The varnish is so very glossy. You can't take a picture of this of this painting without without getting a glare, like big time. And I wanted that on purpose. That's by design, because bright shiny objects, the new things some of us chase, the 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 new things, you know, the better things or whatever. So I wanted her also to be a shiny bright object, and I thought that was appropriate too. So there it is, the story of La Paloma, as always. All the links to the artwork and resources and collections are in show notes at ipaintideaspod.com. You can find it all there, including a link to Dioax Art Essays, where I included this animated study of what I saw in my head before I painted. And then I overlay that with my mom's La Paloma. So you can also hear what I was listening to while I was painting. So it's pretty cool. So check that out. And I also invite you to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review. And if we're not connected on social, look us up. The gallery account on Instagram is at Dao Art. And make sure you give us a follow. And don't forget to let me know how you feel about change. Until next time, embrace the change or brace for impact. I'll see you next time.